Good morning, everybody. As we come to the Chita, so today, today is Wednesday with the fourth reading in the portion of Pinchas. We're holding chapter 27, verse number six. The daughters of Tzlacha that are speaking justly. should be given to them an inheritance of land between between them in the between their uncles, the brothers of their father. and therefore you should give the inheritance of their father to them. Now she says. Cain means yois, it's rightly. As God said, this is the this is the way the passions described before me on high. They are correct. It teaches us that their eyes perceive what Mesh Rabbeinu's eyes did not. These girls were so special that in a certain way they had the capability to see, to bring about a halach and teda. Cain b'nei Safra Davis, Yafatov, the claim is just. Portion is a person whose words the Holy One blessed be, he concurs. Nasen titen, the double expression nasen titen denotes two portions: the portion of their father, who is amongst those who came out of Egypt, and a portion which he shared with his brothers in the part in the in, with his, of his father Chayfer. So, as we learned in Ashi before, that the way that the land was divided was the, the people that came into the land at that present time, and it went back to their father who came out of Mitzrayim. Vaita, she says. It's an expression denoting anger. Uh, for God is angry when one does not leave a son to inherit him. Vavarta, in another interpretation, since a daughter transfers inheritance from tribe to another, when her son or husband inherits from her, since prohibition shall not transfer the inheritance, that was the problem. The problem was that the traitor wanted that the land of Israel should be divided to the tribes, and it should always stay within the tribes. So this was the issue. So that was the problem. That's why God was unhappy that this such a thing should be a dilemma to begin with. Um, you shall transfer the inheritance to his daughter. In the case of all of them, it says you shall give over it. But in case of a daughter, you shall transfer. So it has to be like a forced situation. This situation has to, is going to be a problem in the future. And therefore, the Taylor says the best way to do it, they sell the double amen. And therefore, tell the Jewish people, Ish like a person dies, God forbid, and he has no son. He shall transfer the inheritance to the daughter. If he has no daughter, he should go to the brothers. If he has no brother, he gave him to the uncles of his father, the brothers of his father. If he has no uh, he has no brothers to his father. He has no uncles. Then you should go to the first closest relative that he has. He will inherit him. It should be for everlasting law. Uh, so that says the law over here teaches us that the law of inheritance it goes to the father uh, that means you're gonna ha- when you're looking for an inheritor, you're looking from the father's side of, of, the, of the inheritors again because we want to keep the, the land in the tribe. And therefore, we're going to always try to find the father wherever is related to the father. So it could be a cousins and cousins of the father, the father's side. So it will always stay within the tribe. Verse number 12. <speaking in Hebrew> Go unto the mountain of Evarim, Hazeh, this, and you should see the land. Go and look at the land. Ah, she says, what's the connection between the story of Tzlavcha's daughters and this situation? When the Holy One blessed me, he said, you shall certainly give to them. Moshe said, God's commanded me to allocate the inheritance. So maybe God is telling me that it's my obligation. I have to go to Israel. And make sure that they get their inheritance. So he was very happy. So he thought for a moment, maybe that God had forgiven him on the sin. And he can go into the land of Israel. Holy One, blessed be he, he said, no, 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 no. Don't have such false hopes. 
uh, my decree remains as it is, and you have to go see the land because you're not going into the land. Another interpretation, since Moshe had entered the territories of the descendants of God and the descendants of Reuben, he was rejoicing. He said, look, I'm in Eretz Yisrael already anyway because they inherited this land. It became part of Israel. So really, I'm in Israel. So it seems the vow that God me to know, maybe I can go into the actual, or across the Jordan. So this compared to a king who decree that a son could not enter the portals of his palace. He, the king, entered the gate with him, the son following, the courtyard with him, and, and following the foyer with him, following. They came out to enter the inner chamber. He said, no, 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 no. He said, you can't come into the inner chambers. Because I made I I I I've thrown you out of my inner chambers, so therefore you can't come in. So God said, you can't come into the land. The east says, Isa, and you shall see this beautiful land. And then you'll be gathered into your people. You're gonna pass away. like you, like your brother Aaron died. Now that's interesting to say, like your brother Aaron died. Everybody dies. You don't have to give an example. Of Aaron, therefore, as she says, from here we see that Moshe yearned the passing, the death of Aaron. He wanted to die like Aaron died, which was like the kiss of death. That he just laid down on his bed and he just didn't open his eyes. Another interpretation you are better than he, because you did not, you are not no better than him, sorry, for you did not sanctify. But if you had sanctified me, your time to depart of the world would not yet have been arrived. On each occasion that the death is mentioned, the sin is mentioned. For the decree that is pronounced against the generation of the desert, that they should die in the desert on account of the sin they did not believe, Moshe Rabbein Adif requested that sin should be mentioned. So it should not be said that he was one who rebelled, that just like the Jews in Egypt, uh, the Jews, those 600,000 Jews, did not merit to go into the land because they didn't believe in God in certain instances. Maybe Moshe Rabbein didn't believe in God either. So therefore, therefore, every time when it's mentioned, the passing of Moshe, it says exactly why he passed away. This is analogous to two women who were flogged by a court, one for immoral behavior, adultery, and the other for eating unripe produce of the sabbatical year. Here too, you don't want that every the person that ate the fruit by mistake of the sabbatical year doesn't want to be connected to the person who did immor immorality. Therefore, he wanted to make sure that his, that, his, uh, that his sin was announced. And what was the sin? Because made me that sin because you dis disobeyed me, my command in the desert of sin. When the congregation were quarreling, you, like the Shani Bamaim, when you were to, to sanctify me through the water, lay name before the height. Hey, may Medivas Kadesh, this is the waters of disputes of Kadesh. Mid but sin that happened in the desert of sin. Now says these waters alone, they Moshe and Aaron had uh, they Moshe and Aaron, uh, had no other sin in their name. Another interpretation: those waters which Allah instigated the rebellion of the Jews at Mara were the same of those that caused the rebellion at the Red Sea, and those are the same that provoked the rebellion in Mid but sin. So there are three times we find the concept of where Jews rebelled concerning the water. Concerning the water. After hearing this command to go look at Ed's soul, he turned to God and said, This comes, Rashi says, to tell us the virtue of the righteous. For when they're about to depart from the world, they discard their own needs and occupy themselves with the needs of the community. And the first thing Moshe Rabbeinu asked for God, who's going to lead the Jewish people? Lamer, what means to say? He's talking to God. Amalai, he said to him, so to say, Moshe Rabbeinu says to him, answer me, whatever you're going to appoint a leader over them or not. And therefore he says, Yifkad Hashem Aleke let the Lord God and spirit of all flesh appoint a man over the congregation. Now she says, when Moshe Rabbeinu heard that God told him that to, to give Tzlafcha the inheritance of his daughters, to his daughters, 
He said, it's time to meet the ass for the needs of my son. Really, Moshe Rabbeinu wanted that his own son should become the next Moshe Rabbeinu, next leader, to inherit his high position. The Holy One, blessed be, said to him, this is not my intention. But Yeshua deserves to be rewarded for his service. Yeshua needs to become the next leader. We would not depart from the tent because he was there always. This is what Solomon meant when he said, he who guards the fig tree eats its fruit. So Yeshua was the one who guarded the fig tree, so to say. So even though you have wonderful sons, but he deserves to be the next leader of the Jewish people. Why is this said? He said to him, master of the universe, the character of each person is revealed to you. And no two are alike. No two Jews surely are alike. To appoint a leader, them a leader will be the, the, who can tolerate each person's according to individual, individual character is not an easy situation. You have to find somebody who can handle all the ruchais, who can handle all the spirits of Jews. Verse 17, Asher will go out before them. Asher Yavil name who come before them. Who go, out for the, who go out with them and will bring them in. And the congregation of, of, of God will not be like a sheep that doesn't have a shepherd. Now she says, not like the kings of the, of the world who sit at home and send their armies to war, but as I did, for I fought against Sichon and Eich. As it says, do not fear him. And as Yeshua did, as it says, Joshua went out with him. They went out to war. The king went out to war in David HaMelechosa. Similarly, we concern David, it says, and for he went forth and came in before them. So he didn't sit in his office and watch the, watch the war. He went out to war with them. Ashitziam, what means, he'll go out through his merit. I mean, you'll have a righteous leader. Not only go out to war with them, but he'll be righteous. Asher through his merits, another interpretation, who bring them in means that they should not do, they should not do to him as they did to me. Let this next leader not only take him out of Egypt, but bring him to Israel. Let this next leader not be like me, who didn't complete the job. Give them a leader that's going to complete the job. God said to Yeshua, take your Yeshua, Benun, the son of Nun, a man who has a spirit within him, and you should put your hands upon him. Upon him. Now she says, first of all, he's not going to want to accept the job. Encourage him verbally. Fortune are you to have merited to lead the Jewish people. Lecha, someone who's verified by you, someone you know. I'm not giving you somebody out there. I'm telling Yeshua. Yeshua is a person that stood to your right side. Asheru Arbei, you asked that question. You requested a person that has the spirit, someone to be able to character of each one. I believe Yeshua can do it. Samachtas Yadecha love. Provide him with the announcer so that he can expound Allah during your lifetime. Don't wait to, 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 to anoint him, so to say, to, uh, to, uh, to give him the leadership when you die. Start right now so people will see that you respect him. So that they should not say, say about him that he did not raise his head in the days of Meshach So therefore, right now, when you, when you talk to the Eden Tata, let him be right there and also put his put it in his two cents, so to say. came and standing before in the presence of Allah, the king, the king. You should bring him in front of the Jewish nation. You should command him to become the next leader in front of them, so they know that you are interested in this concept. Tivisa concerning Israel, be aware that they are troublesome and obstinate. You know, this is a rough group. And therefore, you have to make sure that they know that you want him to be the leader. You accept the offers on a condition that you take upon yourself all of this. 
verse 20. And you shall bestow from your majesty upon him. So that the congregation of Israel will take heed. And as she says, this is referring to the radiance. We know that after, that until, that Moshe Ben had to wear a cover in his face because he had a radiance. And God said, I want you to give that part to, to Mahitcha, not your whole majesty. Thus we learned that the face of Moshe was there like the radiance of the sun. The like mother says his face shone like the sun. And the face of Joshua was like the moon. Meaning, that they will behave towards him with reverence and awe, just as they behave to you. Verse 21, And you shall stand before Leazar the Kayin, Yamid, Vishale, Bimishpat Udim, until he'll ask, he'll seek counsel by the Mishpat Udim Vitumim, by the breastplate, Ne Hashem, Alpivyaitseyu, on the mouth of this, this breastplate, they shall go out, Alpivyavayu, and this way she come back in. Who v'chol b'nei Yisrael him Yeshua and all the Jewish people ite with him chol le'ed in the time congregation. Shalat she says, what are we here? He's telling him, you asked to request that made that the children should inherit you. This honor shall not depart from your father's house. For even Joshua will need Eliezer, because Eliezer was his was his nephew. So therefore, he said ultimately. Every king will have to come on to every leader will have to come on to the priest. They'll have to come to Urim and Tumim. They'll have to come on to the priest. Bashallah you say they will find the necessary to go out to war. They'll have to ask, you know, it was a system that the king had to ask the Urim and Tumim. He has to ask the Kohen Gadol if, if it was a good idea to go to war. And ultimately he had to ask the Sanhed in the Kohen High Court. So Piv, that's what Ashi says, Shalalayaza. On the mouth of Eliezer, they'll have to go out. But Kola Eda, one means on the time congregation, the Sanhedrin will have to ask the high court if it's right to go out to war. Verse 22. And this is what Moshe did, what God commanded. I see him. I took Yeshua. He stood him up before Eliezer. In front of the time congregation. He took him with again. He took him with words, and he, he with words he impressed upon him, and informed him the reward in store to the leaders of Israel in the world to come. It's right. I saw a bumper sticker: a "Rabbi's pay is lousy, but the re, but it's but it's, the reward is is out of this world." So it's out of this world. The reward of a rabbi is out of this world. In the world to come. And he landed, he laid his hand upon him. And he commanded him. As God had commanded him in the hands of Moshe. Now she says, Here Moshe Rabbeinu was giving over leadership. So he did it generously. Over and above what he's been commanded. But the Holy One blessed me. He said, you shall lay your hand, a single hand. But it says by Yismach, plural. But he did not, he didn't do both hands. He fashioned it like a full overflowing vessel, filling him with wisdom in abundance. So Moshe Rabbeinu gave, and he gave Ba'ayin Yafa. You should give Ba'ayin Yafa with a good eye. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu did. Kashadib Hashem. That is, we also requested to, to the majesty. He bestowed some majesty, radiance upon him. So Yeshua was given an, a greater abundance of, of blessing. And that completes the Chumash for today. We go now to the fourth chapter of Yigeres HaTshuva. And after explaining all about fasting, we're going back to what is Tshuva. After we completed all about the fasting, how much is your fast, now get around fast, etc. Alter Rebbe says, whatever I mentioned above in the third chapter, is all about the uh, refers to accumulation of the atonement. It's not about repentance again. All this fasting and is not about the repentance, it's about the, the rectification of the uh, of the separation, the kapara, the forg forgiveness. It's really the polishing 
It's about the atonement and the polishing of the soul. It's not about the forgiveness. It's about the to polish back the soul to its original glory. To clean it before God, so to say. So that the no visage of the former sin remains after repentance. So there's no dirt anymore that uh, collected over there through the concept, impurities that, that came about through the concept of the sin. As I cited above, where I, where, I, where I brought down a Gemara, the Talmud says, in Mesechta Zvachim, the tractate of Zvachim, the Oila, what's can, what is the concept of a burnt offering? Dorini. The Gemara says that this is like a gift. It's a gift offering. The, the Gemara, it's not my, the Altarev, it's a Gemara. The Gemara says the sacrifice. Why was the importance of a sacrifice? Because even in the time of the Beis Amidosh, you had to confess your sin to God anyway. You had to do tshuva. If you brought a sacrifice, you didn't do tshuva, it was nothing. You need to do tshuva. What was the sacrifice? The sacrifice was the gift, was the concept that the, that's what it's called, kare, karban. Karban is, is the concept of, of closeness. So the karban was to become close again. Not that, that you were forgiven on, to forgive your sin. You're forgiven your sin, but you want to come close again. And that was the karban. That's the meaning of the word karban. It's, it's, the root is kare, kuf, reish, beis. And the karban is kuf, reish, beis, nun. But the root word is karev, to become close. And that's the Gemara. So the Gemara gives an analogy of a king. When you, insult, when, you, when you hurt the king, when you went against the king, you can ask the king forgiveness, but then the king will forgive you and say, you know what, but I, wanna, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. I forgive you, but go away from me. But here the carbon, the gift, so to say, creates the, re, recreates the relationship. And that's, the, that's the, what the, the Alta Rebbe said. And uh, it, after the ancestors' successful plea of forgiveness, we need to have a carbon. The above a mental fast or the counterpart of charity serves as dysfunction that we want to create the, 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 the relationship. But let's go back to chuva. That's what this letter is not. It's not about kapara, it's about chuva. Amnon Aschalas mitzvah at chuva vikra. But the beginning of the mitzvah of chuva which this letter is about you, repentance and its core, is one thing, Lashuv Ad Hashem. It is true, wholeheartedly return to God. Lashuv Ad Hashem Be'emes, to return to God in truth, Ubelev Shalom. These are two important words, Be'emes, truth. That's a very important thing when it comes to Tshuva, not to say I'm repenting, but to really mean it truthfully. And number two is with a complete heart. As soon we, as soon as it will soon come apparent, this return until God means return until to the point that one has restored the completeness of God. That's what the point of it. The Kabbalah is that we we you'll soon understand that the Yudke Vavke, the tetragram of the name of God became separated, so to say, in the world because of my sin. I broke, so to say, the unity of God in the world. And therefore, I need to bring it back. I need to fix the yud k vav k, And that's why tshuva is tosh of hey, is to return the letter hey. Because the letter hey, which is the last letter of God's name, was, so to say, that letter that's connected to the world was disconnected through my sin, from the other name, the other part of God's name, I need to bring it back. Bring back the hay, as the Siddhis will explain. Bring it back. Bring back the name of God. Bring back the unity of God in this world. Believe Shalom, right? So, so, so as, as soon as a parent, the let return unto God means returning until the point that he has restored the completeness of God. The four letters of God's name that has been found within every Jewish soul, I broke that. The letter that comprises the tetragram, Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. That's the letters of the four letters of God's name, which again is in, it's part of it's a part of the makeup of everything of the world, but it's part of the makeup of my soul. 
Yud Kei Vav Kei. That's why there's four letters. There's five le- There's five levels of the soul. There's the, the, the four letters of God's name, and then you have Yechida Shibin which, which, which is a part of God totally. So it's not even a, a name. So I need to I need to fix the names of God. I need to fix the four letters of God's name. Hech Levai Hetiv. So to explain this, this must be now explained thoroughly, Barachovas Habir, and comprehensively. Because if you want to do tshuva correctly, you need to understand this of what really tshuva is. What 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 was the sin, and what is the tshuva? I need to know what the core of the sin is. I know I know what I've done wrong, but what was the what happened in the spiritual world? What happened with the sin, and and therefore, if I understand the depths of what happened, I can understand the depths of how to fix it. Heck, the Masha Kosher Bezaya. So let's begin. What's brought down in Kabbalah? What's brought down in the Zohar? According to Bila Mila's Tshuva, as I explained it, I just said it already. But here the Zohar says it. The word Tshuva, Tshuva. The word Tshuva, repentance. Most of us translate that as the word repentance, but really, it's not. It's not the right translation. Tshuva is to return, and it's the Zohar writes. It's actually to you have to split the word into two the word into two words, and that is tshuva al derech asoid. In the tshuva, according to the side, if you're gonna, you have to, that's when you look a, a little deeper than thus the word tshuva to return. You look a little deeper. That's the the Zoya tells you the mystical interpretation is tashuv hey. There you got it. Tashuv hey. Split the word in two. Tashuv means to return. Hey, return the letter hey. Okay, the hey shall return. The function of tshuva is to return the letter hey of the divine name Havaya to retach it to the level represented by the letters that preceded it. Yud, K, Vav, K. Now, if you say Toshuv hey, return the hey, the problem is there's two hey. In God's name, Yud Hey Vav Hey. So what Hey do you return? And what's the difference between the up, the first letter Hey Yud Hey, and the second letter Hey Vav Hey? It's two Hey's in the God's name, right? So the function is to retract, right? So therefore, we have Hey Tata. We have the lower letter Hey is Chuva Tata. So the reconnection of the latter hey, that's before the vav yud hey vav hey, is the is is the lower level of tshuva. It's called tshuva tata. Lower level of tshuva. Hey ilah, the first hey, is tshuva ilah, is the higher level of tshuva. That's what the Zoya writes. So we have to understand what that means. Tshuva ilah, tshuva tata, the first letter hey. The second letter A. Gamma That's number one. Gamma Shakaz of Zaya. We have to understand what the Zaya also writes. Hakadish the Holy Zaya. Miktas Mikimis in several times it says, She ain't Shuva Me'eles. That Shuva, this is a tough statement of the Zaya for all men out there. She ain't Shuva Me'eles, the Poygim Brisei. That tshuva is not going to help if, God forbid, you violated the covenant of Moitzah Zedel of Atala, of wasteful emission of semen. That's why there's a lot of groups in, in, in the world that are, are, are very nervous about this sin. The sin of, of, of Zedel of Atala. It's called the sin of Poygim Ebris. That's it's a very harsh word over here. In essence, those two words, that somebody who violated a covenant, that means a person that had wasteful omission, it violated the covenant between him and God. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a powerful concept. But Dr. Rebbe is bothered by it. First of all, because number one, you should know, this, as Dr. Rebbe been saying, there's no... There's no Aveda in the 365 negative commandments of Zedel of Atala, you should know. 
There's no such a sin. We know that God was angry with Er and Anon that they wasted their seed. But we don't find in, in the Torah a negative commandment. You shall not do omission. A, 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 a zealot, a emission of, of, of semen. It doesn't say such. There's no such a which is interesting. But ultimately, the Zoya says, irrelevant that there's no Aver in it, there's no sin, one of, it's not one of the six, 365 sins. Nevertheless, you can't do truth on it. The Alter Rebbe says, it's very uh, astonishing statement of the Zoya, because we know the Gemara says, nothing stands before truth. There's nothing. When the Gemara says that there's nothing that stands before Tshuva, it doesn't make a difference. I feel Even if you uh, worshipped an idol, even if you had a prohibited relationship, nothing stands before Tshuva. Now, a prohibited relation is a waste of semen, besides a prohibited relation. It's the point of that you gave your, gave your seed to somebody that did something that the day bishop prohibited. So, nevertheless, the Gemara says, you can do tshuva on anything. You can do tshuva on everything. Ain't look, that's a general straight mishnah. Ain't lecha dava aim if there's tshuva. Very important line you should remember. Ain't lecha dava aim if there's nothing that stands before repentance. Jews are commanded to give up their lives rather than transgress through prohibition. Right? That's one of the three cardinal sins, so to say. Murder, idolatry, immorality. Nevertheless, if you didn't give up your life for that, and you did the idolatry, or you did immorality, God forbid if a person did that, nevertheless, the Mishnah says, the Gemara says, nothing stands before repentance. Yet repentance atones even those that. So then how can there be, how can there be that there's a sin which repentance doesn't help? If something is missing, something is questionable on the Zaya. What's the meaning of the Zaya? In the book, it's a Kabbalah book. He says the meaning of the Zaya is He says the two Chuvas, Chuvi La and Chuvi Tata, the upper level of Chuvah, lower level of So it doesn't help for that sin, the lower level of Chuvah. And that's how he answers the Zoya. When the Zoya says that Shuvah doesn't help on that sin of a wasteful seed, is only Shuvah Tata, the lower level of Shuvah. If you want to do Shuvah, if you want to do Shuvah on that, you got to do Shuvah Eloh, you got to do the higher level of Shuvah. So now we have to understand this. If we want to do it, so now we should all really learn this well to do Shuvah Eloh. To do the higher level of tshuva, so we so it can rectify even that sin. So to grasp even a minute glimmer of this, <laughs> the Alter Rebbe is going to go in depth in this. So settle down. We have to first understand what's written in the Torah. And then from the words of our sages of blessed memory, Indian Hakadas and Mr. You have to understand what means what is the punishment. Let's take the worst punishments in the Torah. That the Torah says that you're going to be cut off for God. Kadis. He cut his t kadis. You're going to be cut off for God. Or you're going to have misubidation. Right. You know that you don't have to give a Punishments of the penalty of, of the court is understood. You murdered somebody murdered somebody, he's put to death. Okay, you don't think you don't uh, you don't have to explain that. You put you put somebody that you kill somebody, we have to kill you. But what about this the sins that between man and God that is a punishable by death? What, what is the meaning of that? God forbid a person violates a eats chametz for Pesach. He's a who makes mamish kind of hamishes that the Torah says that will die before the age of fifty. God forbid. Who misses the shemaim, and the Torah says the certain things you're punishable by by death by heaven. Mesh mamish will die before sixty years old. That's why people celebrate when they pass sixty because it shows that they didn't have kodesh. 
Kehananya ben Azza Navi Biyirmat. So you can find the story, uh, the prophet Hanina ben Azra in in Jeremiah, that a result of his false prophecy, God told him, You shall be banished from the face of the earth. This resulted in his actual death. So when Abish sets as an expression, it means you're gonna die. And sometimes there are certain situations when God says in the Torah that a person is punished by death. We're talking with the man and God. That you're punished by death by God. They uh, they they die they die right away. And I and the the the, the simple and the simple example is what I mentioned before. Eva Oinon. Eva Oinon. The Torah says they spilled their seed. They didn't want to give Tamar a child. They 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 spilled the seed, the, the sons of Yehuda, and the Torah says by Amos, and they died. That means they died right away. They spilled the seed. I don't know exactly if it was a second later, but it sounds in the Pasuk, they spilled the seed and they died. So you see, they died right away. God was unhappy with this, what they did, and they died. That's Misa Bidei that's a that's where you see misa misa that is that is in the hands of God so to say. As we find in Aaron and which were the sons of Judah. So this involves an occurring death penalty by divine agency. In any event, both scripture and the sages attest that those guilty of sin punishable by excursion, kodis, excision. Or death by divine. Again, these two these two expressions you can find in the Torah, where the Torah says he cut his tikkades, they shall be cut off. Or when the Torah says he shall be put to death by God, so you find these two concepts, these two expressions, would actually die before they reach the age of fifty or sixty. So this reads to the following question. Now the Rebbe has a general question. You can actually find in every generation <laughs> you can find in, in, in history that you have in generations that we know people that have done these sins and they've had a long life <laughs> and the years they had many they lived a happy long life so what's going on? How is it possible? How do you put how did that that type, that's like a contradiction of the verse? So you have a people that have done these sins, some of them have done it intentionally, and they've lived long lives. So what's going on over here? So how is that possible? That that's almost like saying that the verse how did how did it's openly against the verse against the punishment? So how do you answer that question? But you're going to have to wait. Because here, the Tanya ends today. <laughs> so we are, we're left with the question. Don't have a, don't lose any sleep over this. You can, uh, you'll can you wait till tomorrow. And Al Rebbe is going to explain to you this concept of what an Aveda is. We think the Aveda is a punishment. It's not that. It's much more deeper. The sin is much more deeper than the punishment. Because you can actually, God can forgive you these punishments. But the sin is still a sin. And that's going to be the concept of what the concept of the sin is. And that's more important than the punishment. But we'll have to wait. This way the Tanya ends today. Today is the uh, 18th day of the month, which in Tilim is chapter 88 and 89. If you say those two chapters, you would have done the Chitas of the day. And I wish you all a good day. And Mitchem, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll continue at 8 o'clock. The chitas of the day.